We have our lines ready to go. Let's select the outer rectangle and go over to the surface toolbar. Click the arrow and cr select create surface from planar curves. If the curves you've selected are truly planar, that means flat on the Z axis, Rhino will create a surface. Surfaces and polysurfaces are automatically associated with whatever layer you're working on. So if you're on the wrong layer, just right click on the desired layer and select move object to layer. Let's select all the line work we have and join it as much as possible with J. Now we can use the split command, SP, select our surface and the line work as cutting objects. If you've drawn your lines carefully and made sure to snap to intersecting lines, your split should work out pretty well as this one has. You might have to investigate your line work for disconnected ends if this didn't work for you. Now I'm gonna go through and move all these individual surfaces to their correct layers, using the sketch as a guide as to which piece belongs where. So we have this um, series of split surfaces here and I'd like to reconnect them. We can select all the pieces, press J for join, and then use a command called merge all faces. This will stitch a joined surface back together. So we're starting to see the bones of a basic model. Let's check out a few of the display modes that we have available to us. Currently, I'm on Ghosted. You might be on Wireframe. Check out the rendered view. You might notice that different colors are displayed in different display modes. In Ghosted, Shaded, and Wireframe view, Rhino displays objects by their layer color. In Rendered and Raytrace views, Rhino displays layers by their assigned material. These can be two different things, and in our case, I did this on purpose so that the layers would approximate the planting areas we were working with from the sketch. But in rendered view, I wanted to make the planting areas more akin to different shades of green. I'm going to split this last surface up here with a few lines just to put in those paths that I saw in the sketch and finish off our surface modeling. If you wanted to export a nice rendered plan, you could already do that with the surfaces and the colors that we have right now. Quick note, in case you're seeing ISO curves on your um, surfaces, you can turn these off in the properties panel by deselecting ISO curves. A command I use quite a lot after I'm done with my line work is cell CRV, cell curve, and then using my quick menu hiding the curves. Let's go through these planted areas and draw in some contour lines. Make sure you're on the L contour layer and use the interpolate points command. This gives you control over the shape and direction of the contours. I'm gonna use control points to drag the shapes to approximately where I want them. And now I'm gonna just continue drawing in the contours for all the topographical areas that I want. You can choose your own or copy mine. I'm just gonna skip ahead. Okay, now that the contour lines are all drawn, I want to use them to generate topography. The first thing we need to do is move the contour lines vertically to create heights. If we think about how contours work, this area would be the flattest zone, and then it steps up by each contour line I set amount. We'll use the vertical move command to do this. Let's select all the contours. Right click the layer and choose select objects. This will select all the items within that layer. Now let's use M for move and V for vertical. Doesn't matter where we put our mouse, the move direction is constrained to vertical. I'll put 0.3 as my initial height. We can see all our lines have been moved from the other line work. Now we can deselect the first contour lines in every section and move the next layers up by 0.3. Let's continue doing this until all the contour lines have been moved. Okay, all the contour lines are raised to their correct elevations. So now we need a starting point to create the hills. We have these surfaces and we can use them to generate closed polylines to serve as a base. 
Select all of the surfaces you want to use and then use the command dup border. This creates a closed polyline around any surface, a very useful tool. We could also use the command extract wire frame, but it produces separate disconnected polylines instead of joined ones. So I'll undo that. And the command again that we use is dup border. Let's grab that border and the contour lines associated with this shape. We'll use the patch command. Within this command, we can preview our shape. The shape will change depending on these values. If we set it back to the default, which I believe is 10, 10, and 10, we can see that the resulting poly surface is not coplanar with the edges and doesn't quite conform to our selected curves. So I always increase the U and V values in line with the units that I'm working in, and I decrease the stiffness to one. This allows for a much more conformable poly surface and creates um, a surface that's really smooth and tight. In rendered view, this looks pretty good, smooth and with a nice shadow. Um, let's just move it to the right layer. And now we can keep going with the rest of the shapes to create topography using patch. I'm going to change some of the U and V values depending on the size of the shape I'm working with, and you can try out different values too to see what works best for your contours. For this long linear vegetation, I'm going to give it double the U value. Let's select all of the contours by right clicking the L contour layers and choosing select objects. We could also use cell curve. Either way, let's hide them. These last few lines weren't on the right layer, so I'll fix that and hide them too. Now that we have some topo with shadows, the ground plan is looking even more lively than it was. We do have some upright elements though that we need to extrude. So we have the water feature, um, the walls, and the different types of hedges that are lining the garden. We can use the same process to extract polylines for use for extrusion, just as we did with the planting surfaces for topography. So select all of the elements that you want to extrude and use dip border. Now we can go through and layer by layer extrude the closed curves to the heights that we choose. I'm going to use the command EXT to extrude. I'll set the first set of hedges to 4 meters for the dark ones, 3.5 meters for the light hedges, and 2.5 meters for the wall. I'll also set the water feature wall to 3.5 meters. It's all looking pretty good. Um, I will sell curve and hide them. I'm noticing though that there's an issue here where the patch surface and the other planting surface are intersecting strangely. We know we can split flat surfaces, but how do we split curved ones? It's pretty easy. Let's select the inner planting zone and use dip border to generate a closed polyline. Now we'll use the project curves command from the toolbar here. This projects selected curves onto a surface or poly surface. We can see that the lines are conforming to the complex shape here. Now we just need to split it like we would with any other surface. We have a separate closed curve. I'll change it to the correct layer and hide or delete the surfaces and lines that we don't need anymore. The final thing we're going to do is create a bottom surface for this water feature. Let's go back to the plan view and draw in some contour lines that we'll use to generate the surface.
To create a starting point, we first need to generate a surface of the entire water edge. We didn't draw that in because we have all these planted areas over top. So if we select all these surfaces making up the water zone, we can use CO to copy, then click in place. Let's move all the surfaces to the water layer, then J for join, and merge all faces. The whole point of doing this is to show you how to quickly manipulate surfaces you have available so you don't spend a long time trying to retrace elements. Use dip border and now we can get rid of this surface. We don't need it anymore. So we'll move these contours the same way we did before, except instead of putting in a positive value when we move vertically, we need to use minus 0.3. If we don't use the minus sign, our lines will still move upwards in the z-axis instead of down. We can select all our contour lines and the water outline, use patch, and make sure the surface is looking tight. I'm going to put it onto the planting layer, and let's unhide the water surface. I'm going to show you how to change a rhino material now. If we want this water to be a reflective surface more akin to water, we can click the material here. This brings up the materials panel. If I choose the down arrow, I can add a new material. I'll use Rhino's existing library. This comes with every clean install of Rhino. In miscellaneous materials, we have a few water options and I'll select this one. If we look at the ray traced view, we can see that we get a reflection on the water surface. So this concludes the basic modeling and in the next video we'll add some trees and people and learn what we can do within Rhino's inherent rendering and display modes to produce presentation graphics, cut sections, and create axonometrics.